<laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to 31 1990s horror movies for Halloween, where I'm counting down my favorite horror movies from the 1990s. So we're at number 22, and uh, at number 22, we have one of the best sequels ever made, and that is The Exorcist 3. So many people know Brad Dourif for Chucky, and I do love Chucky. You will be seeing Chucky on this list. And while I do like certain Child's Play movies more, a little more than The Exorcist 3, I would say that Brad Dourif as the Gemini killer in The Exorcist 3 is his best performance. There I was, so awfully dead in that electric chair. I didn't like it. Would you? It's upsetting. He does a great job playing Chucky, but it's only his voice in that movie. And while he does a great job in it, we don't get to really see him act. We get to hear him act, and it's a great job, but we don't really get to see Brad Dourif act. In The Exorcist 3, we get to see him act, and it's one of the most terrifying performances ever. We also have George C. Scott in this movie, and George C. Scott is one of my favorite actors. I've heard him... I've heard people describe him as painfully human, and that is so true. There is no... there aren't many actors who are as painfully human in their performances as George C. Scott. That was 15 years ago. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Temple, why are you I'm encouraging you to shut your mouth?! A lot of people hated Exorcist 2. I still have not seen Exorcist 2 because I don't really have any desire to see it. But The Exorcist is viewed as one of the greatest horror movies of all time. A lot of people say it's the scariest movie of all time. And then shortly after The Exorcist, you had The Exorcist 2, which people hated. And I, I can't say whether it's good or bad because I have not seen it, but I know a lot of people hate that movie. And then you had The Exorcist 3 come out, which a lot of people steered away from for the longest time, but it started growing a following because it is so good. There are some people out there who like it more than The Exorcist, and I get it. It's, it's a great movie. The movie follows uh, Lieutenant Kinderman and Father Dyer after the events of The Exorcist. It, depending on what version of The Exorcist you see, there, in the ending, I think in the director's cut ending, um, you see Father Dyer and Lieutenant Kinderman develop a friendship. And then in this movie, we find out that they've continued that friendship to this very day, which I like. Now, Kinderman is played by George C. Scott in this movie, and again, he gives an amazing performance. Of course, it's, it's George C. Scott. Brother Eddie had these same stupid symptoms for years. Your brother Eddie died at the age of 30. So what? He got killed in Vietnam. There could have been some connection. A connection? Are you sure this isn't serious, Joe? Now, the interesting part of this story is um, these killings start happening in the city, and Father Dyer is eventually killed. Um, in the same way that this serial killer from so long ago used to kill people, the Gemini killer. Uh, he used to kill people in this certain way, and now those killings are happening again. But the Gemini killer has been had been captured and executed years ago. He was executed the same night as the exorcism in the first movie. So Kinderman soon discovers a patient in this mental hospital, and it's Damien. It's Damien Karras from the original Exorcist, and we find out that he's possessed by the spirit of the Gemini killer, which creates this very interesting I've said this a lot, but it creates an interesting dynamic throughout the film. You must get them to do that, Lieutenant. It's important. The Gemini is dead. No, I am not! I'm alive! I go on! I breathe! Because you have Damien Karras, who was killed in the last, the first Exorcist, uh, Exorcist movie, but now he's back again, but he's possessed by a serial killer. The best moments in this movie are the scenes between George C. Scott 
and Brad Dorif. Now, the interesting thing is, you know, sometimes we'll see Damien as Damien, but then the times where he switches to the Gemini Killer personality, jo uh, uh, Brad Dorif takes over for that role. And these are some great, great sequences, and they are some legitimately scary and suspenseful sequences, but it's just two people talking to each other. Brad Dorif gives such an amazing performance as the Gemini Killer, being creepy while in a straitjacket. A decapitated head can continue to see for approximately 20 seconds. So when I have one that's cocking, I always hold it up so that it can see its body. Something I love about this movie, and it's a little thing that I love to see in performances, um, George C. Scott does it and Brad Dorif does it. They both do it in this movie. Spit. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but I love spit in, in movie performances. When someone is so full of emotion they can't control their fluids flying out of their face. I love when actors do that. I love when actors get so deep in a performance that they let the spit fly out of their mouth. And there are two sequences where we see spit fly in this movie. One from Brad Dorif, run from, one from George C. Scott. As he watches while I rip and cut and mutilate the innocent, his friends, and again! But it's so good. You just have two great performers giving two great performances in this movie, and it's great. And Brad Dorif does stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with George C. Scott. Brad Dorif is a great actor. I don't think he gets the credit he deserves at how good of an actor he is. Most people just view him as Chucky. And again, while he's great as Chucky, he doesn't get the respect he deserves for his acting. And him as the Gemini Killer really shows how great an actor he is. Gloria, Now, there's the original director's cut, and then there's the uh, theatrical cut of the movie. The theatrical cut of the movie has this priest in it named Father Morning who doesn't really have much to do with the plot, and it eventually leads to an exorcism, which a lot of people say doesn't belong in the movie, because uh, when the movie was originally released, uh, they just wanted to, uh, the writer just wanted to call it Legion. This was done by the, the original writer of the original Exorcist book. He just wanted to call the movie Legion, but the the studio said that he had to call it Exorcist 3 Legion. So he did, and then they said, well, you have to put an exorcism in the movie. It's called Exorcist 3. Of course, he didn't want to call it Exorcist 3, but anyway, yeah, studios, uh, studios always like to fuck things up. <laughs> anyway, um, but yes, even... I will say that I think the theatrical cut is better than the director's cut um, because the director's cut ends kind of anticlimactically. I, I wish it had a, a stronger ending. The Exorcism is the stronger ending of the two, um, but that being said, if the original director's cut had a stronger ending, I'd go with that one. But because the, the theatrical cut, I think, has the stronger ending, I go with that one. But still, it's a very good movie. God is not here with us now. There is only the darkness here. Either way, Exorcist 3 is... I still think it's a great movie. It does have its problems, but it's still a great movie. Um, if you are a Brad Dora fan, watch this movie for his performance alone. Uh, but there are... Other than those scenes, there are so many great scenes in this movie. And yes, people do know it for having one of the greatest jump scares in horror movie history. Exorcist 3, it's so good. You know, so many people like to watch The Exorcist for Halloween, but I say this year, give The Exorcist a break and put on The Exorcist 3. Or watch both of them back to back. Watch The Exorcist, skip The Exorcist 2, and go straight to The Exorcist 3. I think that would make for a good night. Oh, Judy!